Well, the good news is you and I, anybody listening or watching to the stream right now, you know, you are where you need to be. I mean, if you're paying attention to this market and that addicted to it whenever we're here right now, um, you know, I think we're all probably going to make it. So just keep paying attention and, uh, you know, know what's going on in this space. But and speaking of that, um, w this is one of the main topics you and I have been going back and forth with for about a week because it was about a week ago that we found out that one of the maybe the most popular hot wallet that there is available right now, Ethereum wallet that people use, MetaMask. Um, I can't think of one that's probably more popular than that. Um, it was uncovered a week ago that basically people's IP addresses and what they've been doing, what they've been browsing, um, some of the data is being collected by MetaMask, uh, which was kind of a big discovery. Um, I know you know a little bit more about I do as far as everything dealing with this Ewok, but is it something that we should be massively concerned about? Um, what is your impression of what it is they are able to actually track? And what could an alternative actually be? I mean, are we ditching MetaMask entirely, which would definitely not be fun to have to do? Um, but what what's your take on all this? So I, I don't believe that it's actually MetaMask. It is the Infura, hmm. um, which is the node that we all connect to through MetaMask. Okay, that's the one when you when you sign up for MetaMask and it connects to the Ethereum network, you're using the Infura node to right. basically communicate between the blockchains and into Ethereum's network. Um, the easiest thing to do is to switch the network that you're communicating through because yes, they are, you know, gathering, uh, IP addresses. Um, the easiest thing to do is use a VPN, uh, and, and right. that should take care of it. Um, uh, but if you've already used it and you've already got a Coinbase account and you've already done some transactions, they already know who you are. Um, it's just a matter of trying to remain as private as possible. Uh, now there are some, um, I can share this. I want to share this. The RPC thing. Yeah. So there was a, a guy the other day, um, O O X N G M I is his Twitter handle. Um, wallet address there. Yeah. So these are the mainnet RPCs, uh, for Ethereum. And as you can right. see, um, all the green means that they're reliable. Um, and then you go over here to this column, which is your privacy. Um, anything that is yellow is potentially, um, there's not enough information out there in the, in the readme files about it um, to say whether they collect the IP addresses or not. The ones that are red definitely do collect them. Um, and as far as I know, these ones that are green, there's only two of them. Um, right. They actually state that they do not um, collect any information as far as IP addresses go. Um, so the combination of a VPN and switching to one of these, um, these nodes um, is probably the safest way to go. Um, now, they do have a little bit of latency the further down the list you go, which just means it's a little bit slower. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think you're going to notice um, 0.27, you know, what it, 0.27 <laughs> right. seconds, right. Um, or for that matter, a second longer uh, for this one. Now, this one's green, but your score is yellow. So there's a little issue here. So it looks to me like this is the node, um, node real is, is really one of the only ones that is, is sustainable with the, the speed and, um, everything else so yeah do a little research look into it uh, on your own uh, but this is out here and i can probably share i'm going to share yeah, if you the, copy that link yeah yeah i'm going to share the twitter link uh for you guys and put it into the chat here and i know um, we've heard people um we've we've heard well f actually flashbots was one that i've heard people talking about but it actually apparently according to this it does share um, or does yeah. collect data. Um, yep, Anchor, do. I heard somebody talk about as well. So, um, yeah, there's been a couple. Flashbots was one that um, I believe K K for K was 
talking about and then someone came out and said hey uh by the way <laughs> they do as well uh, yeah. yeah so yeah and then th th that's when this came out so this is a good twitter thread to look over and take a look at um we're not going to get into how to change the rpc but if you've done anything with the um pulse chain test net you mm -hmm. should already know how to change that setting it's a it's a matter of just going in and doing a custom uh, custom rpc with the with the right uh, server address, the uh, block explorer stays the same. You don't need to change that, and you don't need to change the chain um, name, but maybe the ID. I, I'm not sure. So look into it it's a little bit basic. more. Yeah, it's pretty very basic to just change your Ethereum mainnet. Um, and, and keep in mind, you want to do it with your if you're using your phone. Um, as well, there are settings in, in your mobile device as well, whether you use um, Coinbase Wallet or MetaMask for your phone. Uh, you can change both of those in there as well. So yeah, just keep, keep that in mind. Yeah, definitely a viable thing to do. And I, you know, I know people don't want to ditch using MetaMask or anything. I mean, it's, again, one of the most popular wallets, easy to use, um, you know, and so many sites you obviously are compatible with it and connect to it very easily. So, um, you know, do your due diligence. I mean, in my opinion, I, 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 I don't know how much risk there actually is here in terms of, you know, actually protecting your coins. I don't think there's much of an issue with that or anything. Um, but it always is good practice. And I know you and I both practice this Ewok, but obviously have, I think it's always a good idea to have your stuff just spread around in a lot of places, you know? Well, down the road, it could it could matter. Um, you know, when things go to a CBDC and IP addresses become important uh, mm -hmm. for what you can and cannot transact with, you're going to be on a list, um, and and most of us probably already are. Yeah, um, right. it, like I said, if you've if you've done anything through Coinbase, which is a um, AML KYC company. Um, anti-money laundering and know your customer, they already know who we are. And right. if you haven't been using um, a VPN, then, you know, again, your your information is already out there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a matter of how much you really transact with it. So you know, be careful. Like you said, do your due diligence and, um, you know, make the right decision for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, definitely stuff to be aware of for sure, especially right now. I mean, like security and things like that are things that you always want to be taking into account. But there's all these reminders, again, with the world burning around us here in crypto right now, it's good to remember these best practices and make sure all your stuff, all your ducks are in a row there. So, 